Hello, welcome back. I'm Mindy, and today I have a guest. Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Shine. So, I invited Shine today to my channel because I wanted to have a chat, sort of conversation between two personality types. So, Shine is an INFJ, and I'm an ENFP. And I know uh, we don't like so much the, the labels, or you don't like the labels so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not so much, but I do get it for people to understand it more. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, Shine uh, does a lot of interesting things and I admire her a lot, that's also why I invited her here. So what, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, yes, I'm, uh, so I'm Shine, I'm 28, I live in Rotterdam and um, yeah, so basically what I do is um, to, me and my mom together have a business, so we own a childcare center. Uh, so I work at HR for her, uh, but then next to that, um, I love everything creative, I am very, very um, in love with creativity, with arts, with performing arts. And so um, in regards to that, I am a producer and a director. So I've worked with a few people um, internationally, you know, doing projects, creative directing or producing. And as of next year, I will actually also have my own business. I, yeah, I'm super excited about it. Yeah. Um, which I will also creative, um, yeah, be the creative director uh, and uh, producer of. So yeah, coming yeah. soon basically. I can't tell too much details yet, yeah. but I'm super excited about it and yeah. But next to that, you're me. also involved in work with the church. Yes, you're, that's true. You're a singer as well yes. and you help with a lot of things. How yeah. did I even have time for all of these things? I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how I She's doing. sitting here with me. We did a workout this morning. Yes. So. I, I just, I feel like I, I love doing things in life that, um, you know, is that is not only for me, but to help other people. Yeah. And so that gives me energy. Yeah. As well to be there for other people and to help. Um, yeah. Kind of everyone else around me. So. And that's everything with everything you do. I see. Yeah. With everything that I do, I feel like um, I you don't do it only for yourself. You do it for the greater good. You do it to be a change in this world. You do it to help other people, to inspire people, to empower people, to encourage people. Yeah. And yeah. that's why you do it. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to have you here as well because it's like it's also the same vision I have in life and with the yeah. new project you're starting well with everything you do. So I was like, yeah, we're very like minded and yeah, we are true. these two super powerful combo according <laughs> yeah. to according to the MBTI, so INFJ and FP. Yeah. And while having conversations before this video, we were like, I was just having this conclusion of yeah, we have like we reached the same point yeah, of understanding point. yeah but we do uh, like on the way we do different things yeah. and i that's why i wanted to say okay about the personality type so that's why i wanted to also introduce it to, to this because one of the things that you are watching this uh, channel of course i think most of you watch because of the personality types um what if the main uh, differences it can be also struggle between infjs and enfps is the introverted thinking versus extroverted thinking so that's the third function of them and I've seen how that can create some tension but at the same time it's also a point of uh, kind of development and also evolution if you work on that so I understand I see for instance for myself I was telling you yeah. that before I knew of MBTI and before I knew that my other INFJ friend whom I see very often um, we had a lot of um, differences because she was always trying to I felt like she was trying to break down into peace and not, not only destroy my plans i came mm. to her saying like i want to do this and i'm so excited and she was yeah but mm, yeah what if this happened what if that happened so she mm. will go and look and just destroy it i thought mm. but and now i understand okay it's not about destroying it's about trying to find where is where where it can go wrong right I can't, <laughs> so the thing is with me is um i am constantly thinking like I, my brain can't shut up, my mind can't shut up. Like sometimes I do uh, have moments where I am just like, oh wow, I just, I need to just shut my brain up, my mind, because I'm constantly thinking, I'm constantly reflecting. Yeah. And that's the thing, like every time I have a conversation with a person, 
I'm thinking about the conversation after the conversation, reflecting, okay, what did I say? I could have said it better. How did that person feel? How did I make that person feel? You know, is that person happy with their conversation? It's, it's quite a lot as well. I have, have to do with making the other person feel good and feel, feel happy because that makes me happy. Wow. And so <laughs> I, for me, like, I feel like I'm constantly reflecting on, on everything that I do, every conversation that I have. Every single day, I think about okay, what 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 could I have done better? What what can I do tomorrow to to do better? Yeah, and and that's a strength, and that's also a weakness. But the strength is is that yes, you are reflecting, and yes, you are learning to embrace the process of 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 growing and learning and doing better. But at the same time, the 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 weakness side of that can also be that I am constantly fixated on okay, um, I need to do better, and mm -hmm. you can actually grow into this controlling person or perfectionist in certain ways which yeah. i have to kind of signal that as okay i gotta have, you know take a step back here it's okay yeah. you know if, if i said something to a person and maybe i could have said it different that's fine next time yeah. you will learn from it and don't be too hard on yourself i can be very hard on myself and that's something that yeah i really have to learn and that's because of the same reason that you're trying always to find the ultimate truth, so the ultimate truth to yeah. being kind to the other, yeah. to being good to the other, what's the best for the other, so yeah. you're always trying to find that. It's, it's, I, I do live a lot by, by certain principles, um, and that's definitely one of the principles, is, um, is to be kind to someone else, yeah. um, and, you know, also, then you kind of also expect that that person is, is kind to you, so when that doesn't happen, it's like, oh, but I have this principle, yeah. or I have this certain way of thinking, and sometimes that's also a thing that, yeah, you have to learn and grow in. But also when you have the principles, even then, I guess, you when whatever you're doing, you try to, you're not sure that it's enough, ever enough for those principles. Yeah, I think sometimes you can get to a point where you reach for a certain perfection, which yeah. you're just never going to attain. And that's something that uh, I really have to learn. Like, okay, well, you know, be okay with... Be okay with not being okay. Be okay with not being always perfect. Perfect, yeah. Be okay with that you will have moments of very much humanity that, yeah, sometimes you're not always going to be kind or sometimes you're not always, you know, going to be the most loving person. Yeah, everyone has moments of weaknesses or moments of things, you know, because yeah. that's humanity. Yeah. So in that, you have to also embrace that human side of that you are not perfect. Yeah. So you see yourself throughout the lenses of how the other perceives you because you you mentioned a lot well at the beginning you were like yeah how i reflect on how other people feels about what i said what i did blah, blah, blah. Mm. so in the end it's like you think you you value yourself maybe it's a weird way to put it but you value yourself or you give credit to yourself based on how the other perceives you so that that's actually so <laughs> i couldn't give two answers to that question uh, because it's a i can give you a very human answer and i can give you a spiritual answer okay because the human answer is that often because of my personality yeah i am quite a people pleaser mm -hmm. and i want to, to to please people and i want people to be okay i want to do it to be well i want to make sure that they are taken care of um but at the same time you know i am not perfect I can't ever attain that. So I can't put my identity in that. I can't put my value in that. So that comes with the spiritual answer is, is that for me personally, I then put my identity in God yeah. and I put my identity and my value in him, knowing who, who he has called me to be, knowing that he loves me no matter what, that he is there for me. So that's kind of the, the that's where I go to yeah. in moments where I feel like, oh man, I've, I've really this week really just focus so much on the pleasing people and all this stuff and then i kind of have to switch kind of my thinking like no you know what it's fine i am already love i'm already good enough yeah. you know i don't have to attain that so two answers there i think this is a lot about your development because what mayor's brick studies then is the the way the natural way that your brain reacts to things mm -hmm. so you're not you can say your nature is to think first of a pleasing others or no, i don't know if pleasing is a, a right word but you yeah. know to think first of what the other is going to think instead of like yeah yeah um but now because of your uh really really no, this word my faith word, your faith yeah. um then you install new new values yeah exactly yeah. that's exactly it i do believe that um sometimes you feel a certain way or you have the certain personality or certain characteristics 
um but i want to kind of always align that with my faith yeah that's amazing yeah. that's amazing um so one interesting thing that we were talking before we started this and i said like let's stop now because let's mm -hmm. continue during the video is yes. about the truth that is something that i i see maybe too stereotypical or something but the INFJs are fixated with mm. finding the truth and I think you're not an exception. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I can agree. <laughs> and, and, and so I was giving Shine uh, my point of view and I don't think I'm that fixated with the truth. And so what I was saying also before this video about my uh, other INFJ friend is that we had some problems because I didn't want to look at things from mm. that very, I think it's like a very wide open, like you analyze everything. Yeah. And it's like so like white. It's big. The range. Yeah. And for me, it's like, it feels like it's not effective. Somehow I am fixated with it's useless because I just need to reach my destination or my understanding. And yeah, maybe the understanding I reach to is not the best one because I just go fast without analyzing mm. everything. So when I learned about MBTI, Mayor's Briggs, then I was like, okay, okay, what these INFJs people is doing is actually good for me. And I should learn a little bit and I should open up my mind. And I have to say, it's not easy. Yeah, it's no, I get that. Easy. Yeah, it's not easy for me either sometimes. <laughs> it's not easy because it, I just I just felt at the beginning like, okay, I feel like I cannot really do it, but I, I, I'm gonna try. So, okay, let's talk about the truth. What is the absolute truth? Because when you are a believer of God mm -hmm. or a, a practicing a Christian, as yeah, Christian, a Christianity a Christian. as China is like, uh, weekly, like his faith, her faith is very important. Um, how do you compare that, or what is the, the truth? Because when you when you're in a religion, or when you sorry, I always keep saying religion. <laughs> when you have a faith, and I believe in God as well, so you feel like okay, the truth is what God says that you should do, you know. But I think my opinion is like. Who is not who, who's not a believer of God can still live in truth mm -hmm. in the truth, but it's not called God's truth. Mm -hmm. Do you remember we were talking about the yeah. values? Yeah. So what what I, I I can agree with the fact that yeah what you are saying that you know there are some people that can live in the truth and I believe that as well because um, so what I believe is that every single person is made. Um, in the image of God and we all have this moral compass inside of us of what right and wrong is but at the same time yes we do talk about truth and you know when we talk about society when we talk about culture opinions and mindsets and, and perspective it constantly is changing and therefore I base kind of my my conclusion on is that the truth how we, we as humanity see certain things is subjective because what we believed 10 years ago, a lot of people don't believe that now anymore because it constantly is changing. You know, 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago, it was maybe weird to have a television in your house, yeah. you know, and that was no, no can do. And now 30 years later, it's just normal for everyone. And that's kind of, you know, what people see now is, yeah, that's just normal to have a TV. Or 20 years ago, it was normal to smoke in airplanes you know, and or to smoke in public, uh, in, in private places or inside of buildings. But now it's just um, can't do, we can't do those things. So that's what I'm saying, uh, perspectives and mindsets, they constantly are changing. Yeah. That's why then I am, you know, the analyzing, you know, person that is then asking myself the question, but if everything is changing, yeah, what is, the what truth? is then the truth? <laughs> <laughs> what is then the truth? Yeah. So maybe humans are not made to know the to truth. To know, well, no, not to know the truth, but humans are not made to make the truth or to, to, to say what is the truth. Yeah. Because humans are, as again, and this is, I think we can all agree on it, we can all agree on the fact that we're not perfect. Yeah. So how can not perfect people make up something that's absolute and that's perfect? Yeah. Because absolute means perfect. Yeah. It means that it's complete, it means that it's whole, but we are not. Perfect. And our minds are so limited. How can we yes. even grasp that? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so therefore, I have to logically then come to the conclusion that there must be something that is outside, that there is something that is thinking and that is this way higher than my thinking. Yeah. 
that has to make up all these things because we can all agree that there are certain absolutes. We all believe in love. Yeah. But what is love? We all believe that there is truth. Yeah. But what is truth? So there are certain things that we can all as humanity agree on. Yeah. But where does it come from? And that's the question. And so therefore, I as a person then analyze, okay, it has to be outside of you, like something that is who is not um, th as a human thinking, because it's a human thing we think. Yeah. Not perfect. I think that the truth, in my opinion, is what it, it goes more in line to what you mentioned of the values that we share yeah. as humanity. I mean, yes, there can be a higher truth to that, but maybe my mind does not allow me to go there. So I cannot even think or, or maybe I don't want to because I think it's not practical, <laughs> yeah. you know, my way of thinking. Um, and then, and so this is my natural way of thinking, but I can try and do it like more open with you. But so my natural response to what the truth is, is then that is what we all as humanity have in common that we need and we all start for certain we all need or feel that we would like to be loved yeah 100 percent, definitely and we all also yeah. have emotions or feelings that we want to share with others so we'll, yes. we want to love and we want to receive love yeah and we will all love to live in harmony i think that is one reason why a lot of people uh, fall into depression uh, because there is this lack of harmony or they feel like they would like to be in harmony but they can yeah the community you mean like yeah. you, you, we all are in need of to be around people to have community to for yeah that. yes to living in harmony you can yeah. say with people and yeah. in a community or just to have like a harmony in general like to have a home to yeah. have like because when you have all of the needs covered then you feel like you're in balance somehow so what that's what we all want we per se i think we want the house we want the all of the things that we yeah. want to have it's because of course physically we can uh, be protected and stuff but there is also a feeling of comfort comfort we're looking for comfort to feel good we want to feel loved we want to feel comfort comfortable we want all of those things and so then i look at that and i say like okay this is i think a truth because we all apparently or most of us seem to want that so i think that's yeah. one of the, the the truth yeah and and i i, I would agree with that i i think yeah exactly we are wired to be loved to receive love we all are wired to to um to be in harmony and to or for you say harmony or community or it doesn't matter but at the same time it's the same thing as in we we, we all want people around us we all again want want a home we you know there are certain things that are objectively true because that is what everyone wants so that like that is just the truth yeah right and so when we talk about that like the one thing that i think that that i i go maybe a different step is beyond that i go yeah. kind of in beyond that and saying okay but where does that come from and who plays that inside <laughs> yeah. of us yeah and that's why i think naturally yeah. oh no, that, that's that's too too but, much, too but, much to yeah work. but that's what i'm saying but i actually love your comment i love yeah. that you're saying i basically can't comprehend it yeah well but i love that because yeah. that is the whole point yeah. <laughs> the whole point is that we don't understand everything yeah and that is okay yeah i think the whole point is to have your response like oh my gosh that's too much for me like yeah. that's just whoa that's overwhelming like there's a lot and that's what i'm saying and that's why i believe exactly for that reason i believe in what i believe is because it is just too it's just so much yeah. it's something that i can't even comprehend yeah but you'd like to spend some time there at analyzing that thing that you can't comprehend i i like to on one hand to to know that the basis of it but i like the mystery of it because yeah. the mystery makes me feel human yeah it makes me feel that whoa i am actually in need of something more yeah so therefore the mystery behind it that is why i long for that yeah. because i think if we have all figured it out as humans if we all figured life out if we're all perfect well then what's the purpose what is the use for that i want to learn things that i don't know yeah i want to have moments where i'm like oh wow this i can't even comprehend this yeah i think that's the beauty of 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 the faith that i believe in is that yeah oftentimes you can't comprehend it but i absolutely believe that the way you see it that in the end you're very humble in a humble way you say like i can't comprehend it and you you're okay with that but vastness information that you don't know yeah it's because of your faith yeah because faith. otherwise faith. i think your probably your nature that 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 bring that that way of uh wanting to like 
break down every thought would keep you probably more yeah. busy with trying to but because of your faith in god i think you yeah. reach a different conclusion that other infjs maybe if you're watching leave your comments <laughs> below if it's different for you but i have two very close yeah. infj from, apart from you with whom i also ta have talked often about these things and they do not get to that conclusion they're kind of overwhelmed and they want mm -hmm. to know and they feel like yeah but what is it what is it out there but yeah. what is and they, they spend a lot of time there both of them you don't do that i think it's because you are very anchored in mm -hmm. god and so you know that whatever that is it's mm -hmm. god and yeah no problem <laughs> and at the end of the day i think it also has to do with control you know because sometimes we want to we want to know it's so bad because then we just know and then it, it, that gives us a sense of that control that okay we've known that we know now this information we know now this knowledge and for me there I, I go to the fact okay you know what i can't always be in control of everything yeah um therefore i'm gonna lead that control over to what i believe my faith is yeah um because at the end of the day we, i believe that we all can do it because yeah. we don't know the architect of the of the chair that we're sitting on but, sure. we, be, but we believe right now that it's going to keep us safe and that yeah. we can still make this video yeah so we all can do it yeah but we we allow this chair to have control yeah and and we just have faith in that this chair doesn't break yeah so we all can do it because we all have used our faith every single day we use faith yeah yeah but sometimes we put our mind on it thing. so I'm, that's why i'm just analyzing this <laughs> this this what you just said compared to the cognitive functions and to me in my opinion um you have developed your blind fu functions so those like subconscious functions and i think that have happened because of your faith so, so mm. the moment when you can rely on it to say like i don't know how is it and you just trust that it's, it's God's and and you it's like somehow you do kind of what I do like I I don't keep on exploring more because I think it's just useless but you you, you stop and you, you think it's God's I think it's useless yeah <laughs> that's the difference um but I think that's extroverted thinking so you you're using extroverted thinking mm -hmm. you might not know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. now she's just smiling well, I'm an introverted and extrovert <laughs> <laughs> well that's another thing with the INFJs by the way it's like you are called the more extroverted of, of the introverts. Yeah. And I can really see that in you. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, I feel like I am kind of an introverted extrovert. Yeah. At first, yeah. you come out as like a shy person. But um, I also can see you when you are with your people, you're just like, you're an ENFP, basically. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I have different personalities. <laughs> yeah. You're many people in one person. <laughs> Oh God, I need help. <laughs> yeah, no, but that, that's nice. And in, in, yeah. in change, um, in turn, my personality type is also called the more introverted of the extrovert. So sorry, I had a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> so I am. Uh, the ENFPs are called the more introverted of the extroverted. And so what? How it works is like I can be. You saw me. Like I met her in Rome. Yeah. At the, at the line of the Colosseum. <laughs> so random. But I'm happy with it. <laughs> I'm so happy. Our worlds collided. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was like, you know, oh yeah, hi, hi, hi. I hear you speaking Dutch. Oh, you're from the Netherlands. Oh. So that, that's how it went. And yeah. But at the same time, I need a lot of downtime. I look like yes. an introvert. When mm -hmm. I'm at home, it's like I'm a, I'm a hermit, basically. And I don't want to go out of my house for three or four days in a row. Because yeah, it's overwhelming. Same. <laughs> same. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hard time with people, actually. <laughs> so You hate people now. Well, I don't hate people, but um, people do drain me often. Yeah. You know, in a way that I still love them, but yeah. they still drain me. Yeah. So for even, yeah, when I, if I have a busy week where I am with people all the time, I need like a few days to recover yeah. from that. I need some rest. I need some sleep. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. But do you get your energy out of being with people or out of being alone definitely out of being alone i do not get energy from people what the the <laughs> sorry <laughs> what what okay, it does i'm going to, it's, it's her house by the way so i am the one who's invading her. <laughs> what it does is that so people people do excite me so people do excite me and people i i like to hang out with people and I do get joy from it, yeah. Um, but I do, yeah, like to get some rest. But you after. end up always drained, kind of. Yeah. After. Yeah, it's yeah. more. It's more. I wouldn't like maybe energizing is is a, is a maybe a word that I shouldn't use. Maybe it's more of how how I recharge. 
it's I just recharge when I'm alone. That my my battery just recharges when I'm just by myself doing nothing, and then I'm just you know ready to go and talk to people and be yeah. my extroverted self. Yeah, <laughs> just to run out of energy just soon after. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, I have something similar. We're very similar. Yeah. But I feel like I get my energy from people. I, yeah. I do not feel more energized when I'm alone. Mm. No. Like, <laughs> even though I spend yeah. a lot of time alone, I when I'm with people, like, imagine sometimes, like, I can be four days in a row at home alone, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I go to a party. And party. Yeah, these days with Corona. Yeah, Look, I made two people for dinner. <laughs> distance. <laughs> yeah. Two people for dinner. Well, then I come home. And then I, I'm opening the door of my house and I'm like, I'm so happy, you know. <laughs> I come back, you know, after the, the dinner and I've been cycling yeah. for half an hour. You can say midnight, I'm tired. And I'm like, I'm so excited. That was so good. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I feel it amazing. does energize you. Yeah. And that's, that's, uh, that's really good for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm so happy for you. Maybe I'm a, a vampire, an, an, an energy <laughs> vampire. I just get... Energy from my book. Sharking this people's yeah, energy. That's why. That's why I'm drinking. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. Thank you. No. But at the same time, you know, it's with the right people. If I am yes. with the wrong people, yes. I'm, I'm. Yeah, I, I run out of energy and having also very uh, shallow conversations. Oh, 100 percent. Or very awkward conversations where I feel like I am the person that is going to have to talk all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that is something that really drains me. And what you said, I definitely can agree on. Because there are certain people that I feel so comfortable with that that gives me energy. But it's with the people that I feel like, okay, I don't have to talk all the time. I can have really just silent moments. Yeah. You know, it's just very chill and laid back with those type of people or that I can do those activities with then yes, that's, that also energizes me because when I'm alone, I do all of those things anyway. So if I'm with a person that does that with me, yeah, then it's good to have their, you know, um, them in my presence and I, and we just still do our own thing and, and I still recharge. Yeah. yeah, that's why I think me, myself, I like to have like a, a romantic relationship, a romantic partner. I noticed that the introverted person mm. suits me better. Oh yeah. Because then it's like you can finally just sit in silence with someone that yes. you actually like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not those awkward silences. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the worst. Or someone that keeps you all the time trying to do things, you know? Oh, yeah. That's just too draining for me. Yeah, 100% agree with that. For you oh, as well. Wow. So you would also prefer a, an introvert partner? I would prefer an introvert who can also be extroverted, extroverted yeah. because I do like to have someone who is, because I have a very extroverted side, I can be very crazy as well. So I like someone, oh, yes. <laughs> I can be very crazy. <laughs> Y'all haven't seen nothing yet, okay? <laughs> okay, it comes out here she's, a little she's bit. Right, she's right. <laughs> no, but I can be very, you know, um, energized and crazy and, you know, my weirdo, you know. So I like to have a little bit of a person that is, you know, um, more energetic, bit enthusiastic not too much but in a way that we can just be weird together you yeah know, in a way yeah so um but then at the same time at the end of the day we just both chill yeah just, yeah i really think like i think an, an enfp guy would make you happy then because it's like I an extrovert search. introvert yeah I, I don't know what it is yeah yet. yeah well did you go <laughs> okay you know i'm gonna stop this video now yes. because we're gonna have a second part as well because it's, oh. it's getting a bit long <laughs> and i think we will make a part two yes okay yes, we'll do that. so so excited see you next time bye <laughs>